Good morning. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Vacation Bible School starts this Monday at Geibel from 6 to 8 p.m. If you haven't pre-registered, you can still do so that night. Please come early. St. Rita's Christian Mothers will celebrate their 95th anniversary this Tuesday with a Mass at noon. Congratulations on this special occasion. The Connellsville Parish Office will be closed at noon this Tuesday. In a special way, we remember the souls of Anthony and Madeline Kostelnik at this Mass. Our gathering hymn for today's Mass is Gather Us In, found in your worship aid. Please rise. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreaming brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather Good morning. Let us begin this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you all here to St. John's Evangelist Church here in Connellsville, Pennsylvania, one of the partner parishes of our area along with Immaculate Conception and St. Rita's here in Connorsville and St. Aloysius in Dunbar. Of course, all you here know that. What I'm doing is really reminding all those who are watching us on Facebook. I got it, okay. Uh, it's summer, you know, things slow down a little bit. Uh, but it's great to have you all with us, uh, whether you're physically present here or watching us through uh, Facebook and any other way that you're coming and seeing us. It is great to have you with us once again for a Sunday Mass. And let us continue with this Mass by remembering that each time we attend Mass, each time you and I gather here to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, we are allowed to offer our attendance here at Mass for special intention, our prayers. So I ask you to think of your intention to offer for this Mass, and especially that you and I may be worthy to stand here and pray together and offer our prayers for our own intentions. Let us prepare ourselves by calling to mind our faults and our failings, our sins, and asking our Father for His forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved, Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. I 
don't know if you've been to Idlewild. Most people have. For those of you who are far away from here, it's an amusement park just about half hour from here, 40 minutes. And I've been going there since I was little. We went there. I remember the days when you got in for 50 cents a car load. You know, the good old days. But there's one ride there that uh, it used to be called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, the Mr. Rogers from TV. Uh, it has since been renamed for new generation uh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Personally, I like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood better, but what are you going to do? So anyhow, there is the whole idea behind uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was that you went through on the trolley and you visited people because King Friday gave you the message to let everybody know, the whole cast, to come along, come along to Huggins' song party. Well, with my niece and nephew and they were little and some friends' little ones, I had that whole trip memorized. I could go through it and I could write the script for it or put it down. But, you know, every time you stopped and talked to somebody and the last phrase from them would say, and do you have any news for me? And so everybody on the trolley went, come along, come along to the Huggins song at the castle. And that was the end of the ride. Everybody magically got there ahead of you and you had a Huggins song party. Every time I hear this gospel, where Jesus tells the apostles, come away, <laughs> you know, come away from the maddening crowds. I think of, come along, come along. It sounds, I was ready to sing it again this morning there. But the whole idea that Jesus was trying to get across to his disciples was, you got to take a break once in a while. You got to take a break and refresh yourself. You got to take a break and we can just sit down and talk. Because they had just come back from that journey he sent them on, you know, in the Gospels a week ago. So they're back. They look beat up. It was a rough journey, rough learning experience. So Jesus said, you know, let's take a break. That's what summer used to be for. Remember how things used to slow down during the summer? Anymore, it seems like they speed up. I mean, if you go to the stores, all the summer stuff is already on sale and all the school and fall stuff is out. They've got one store already had winter coats out. You know, special, 50% off. It was probably last year's stock. They're just selling this year quickly. But it seems so hectic anymore for summer that we never get a chance to slow down. Even if we're on vacation, by the time we come back, huh, it's like you never left. But summer was an ideal time for you and I to slow down our lives and spend some more time talking to God. Not that we're doing, you know, we're not doing that now, but talking to God as somebody who we can sit down on a swing with and hold a conversation. That's what summer Hopefully you and I are making it a time in which we slow down enough to talk to God, to bring God a little closer. As I said, to sit down on a porch swing, to sit down at the beach. You know, and you do that in different ways. You can either read from Scripture, or there's a lot of good Catholic books and authors out there, some deep if you want that, some not so deep. If you want that, refreshing. It doesn't have to be deep for the summer. There's a Catholic accent. There's Catholic newspapers. You may subscribe to some of those. Those are all instances in which you and I can sit and talk to God. Maybe you've got one of those old prayer books laying around the house somewhere. Pick that up and say some of those old prayers you've never said in a while. Maybe some from your childhood. Because every time we address God, we're in his presence. We got his attention. 
There were times when, whether on a back porch or a swing, whether it's down at the beach or camping, that we remove ourselves for a little bit and vacation with God. Spend some extra time with God. Maybe, you know, while you're on vacation, you can get to daily Mass, which you can't do because of your work schedule. Or you can stop and visit a shrine or a different church that's in the area. As a family, stop in and make a visit. Because Jesus is there. Hopefully you find time to do that this summer. It is really important that we slow down. Come away, as Jesus said. Come on, come away with me, and let's sit and talk and relax for a little bit. It's hard to do. Jesus found that out, too. The crowds kept following him. But we have to make time for the Lord in our lives. And summer is always a good time to make some extra time. To bring Jesus, you know, right here. Just like sitting on a park bench with him. You'd be surprised the conversations you can have with our Lord. Or any one of the other saints you want to talk to, including our Blessed Mother. It's a nice way to spend a few hours, whether you're on vacation or whether in your backyard, whether you're out for a walk. All you gotta do is address him and you're in his presence. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. Well, no scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Life world to come. Amen. Once again, as God's children, we gather together petitioning him with our needs. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all the leaders of the church, that they may care for their flocks in the manner of the Good Shepherd, seeking out those who may stray or be lost, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they may govern as Good Shepherds, placing the welfare of their citizens over personal ambition and reward, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those around us who are searching for the care of a shepherd, that they may come to know the love of Christ and be warmly welcomed into our faith community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all children, especially those attending Vacation Bible School this week, that they may joyfully experience the message of the Gospels. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In thanksgiving for the St. Rita Christian Mothers, 
who this week joyfully celebrate 95 years of existence and dedicated faithful service to our Catholic faith and community, that they and their families may continue to be blessed in all they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those in need, the poor, the sick, the addicted and forgotten, and especially those on our Catholic community prayer list, that they may find comfort in the care and love of the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that they may be guided by the Good Shepherd to the eternal peace and joy of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father in heaven, we ask you to hear these prayers we have voiced and those deep within our hearts. Allow us the grace we need to make more time in our lives for you, to allow us to slow down and sit with you a while. As always, we ask this through Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servant and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, 
we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And there Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of a body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Almighty Father, since we cannot all receive the sacrament of communion together at this time, we ask you to help us to see and express the communion of our church and to unite our hearts with the heart of Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us now express our desire to receive the Eucharist by praying the following prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment Body receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Body I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Please join in our communion hymn, Bread of Body Life, of found in your worship aid. Body of Christ. Bread of Body life, of hope of the world, Jesus Christ. Christ.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass now in the lives go forth in peace and in love to serve our Lord. Thanks. Have a good week. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Please join in our recessional hymn. We are the light of the world found in your worship aid. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory.